Essentially what we are trying to do is a mind control robot. Um, you know, it sounds like very futuristic, but what we are really trying to do is trying to read uh, signals from the brain and uh, using some very advanced al algorithms, trying to map it to decision making of the robot and help robot carry out some very simple instructions. We're trying to make uh, robots uh, that can uh, work with human beings in a much more intuitive and natural way. Processes like uh, welding, uh, it's very complicated. Uh, so uh, now uh, what we are trying to do is uh, have human beings uh, look at uh, two parts and identify uh, the joint where the welding is required. Uh, if there are more than one joint, then human being can actually look at either the joint and use the uh, signals from the brain to select those uh, joints which needs welding. And robot uh, picks up that information and creates its own path plan and goes ahead and uh, performs those actions required to do the welding. I would say there are two or three very interesting applications of this. One is, uh, think of uh, people who, have, uh, who are physically challenged in some way, who cannot use their fingers or uh, cannot type on the keyboard. They can use this brain-computer interface to give instructions to a robot to perform uh, simple tasks. Uh, number two, uh, in a very busy environment like in a factory where uh, there may be so many things going on, uh, you could constantly monitor uh, humans' brain activity and see if there is something that is uh, unexpected. Uh, human beings tend to notice it. Sometimes you don't say it, but you do notice it. And pick up those signals and tell the robot that uh, something needs to be done. In the moment the operator sees a part which is uh, unusual or a bad, uh, we can pick up the signal from the brain that you have actually noticed that part. So several years ago I started collaborating with Professor Manuel Hernandez in the Department of Kinesiology and Community Health. And we started thinking about a bunch of questions which were sort of uh, in understanding how the mind and virtual reality interact. And we started thinking about this project which involved three things, uh, an EEG um, brain control or brain communication interface, um, and also a treadmill and a virtual reality world. The motivation for the project is that a number of people suffer from various phobias and anxieties due to heights. And we realized that we could actually, or Professor Hernandez realized that we could actually sort of start to study those uh, by virtual reality, by developing a world where you're on a visual cliff. We all started to work together on thinking about how to sense what the brain is actually doing when faced with some visual cliffs. And then the novel thing that we're trying to do is understand if we can feed that back into the virtual world real time. So if you're really freaked out by a visual cliff, then real time we can actually change the virtual world. We're taking several types of information. We're taking in the activity of the treadmill, how, first, how fast a person is walking. We're also taking in all sorts of electrical signals from the brain. So can we help people sort of by thinking or by, in, by being in this immersed environment and understanding the feedback how to address their phobias. Brain-computer interfaces are on the, on the upswing, so this is an exploding area. It's, it's a wonderful confluence of a bunch of really interesting technologies.